Howdy. This is awkward. What's your step Someone say something. What was your step the front of the earlier today? Does it take a game or two for you to really finish evaluating some of the players? It can in some regards. I mean, guys that, that we haven't seen play before, or maybe guys in, in just added roles might have a little bit more anxiety than normal. But uh, you know, for the first game, they'll be they'll be you know everybody's blood will be pumping, and, and whether you're a four-year starter or if it's your, your first go round, I think everybody will have a you know full level of anxiety, and that's good. You know, that's how we try it, and that's why we try to prepare how we prepare. And, and uh, some of the guys that, yeah, maybe are oars on the depth chart uh, start to separate a little bit, do the, the game, and that, that's that's all part of it. What was your assessment of the punter competition? Yeah, Ian Wheeler has definitely has the, the upper hand right now um, and uh, was very consistent. We did a, a big emphasis on that today, and, and he did a, did a very nice job in that. Are you kind of glad that it happened so maybe not so much stress on that? Well, like I said before, I think, you know, you can definitely – I've seen it done before, and – I'm sure it'll happen again where that'll be those duties will all be one guy um, but he could handle it if you know if we asked him to yeah. you mentioned the oars three guys at running back we talked to Scott and Gary about it yesterday but I haven't talked to you about it what's your uh, assessment of, of that battle and, and how are you going to handle that going forward we'll find out yeah I think you know I think I said it I don't know if it was last week or whenever but I think we have three starting running backs and, and um, that's a good thing you know, uh, that all those guys' roles will kind of, whether it's through attrition or a guy having having a different you know set of strengths than another guy, that stuff kind of sorts it out as the year develops. Um, but yeah, those are all three really good guys, and I think a, a tribute to them is is these last two practices after that was kind of laid out. All three of them pra they have practiced great, so that's a good thing. Are they on board with that? Obviously, you know, three guys cuts into carries. Yep. Yep, they are absolutely on board with it, and, and uh, you know they've been the the, the quote unquote veterans. Our young veterans have been helping Royce, and, and vice versa, yeah. and so it's it's a good good situation. Yeah, definitely. Is yeah, it possible all three could get 150 to 200 carries? And is that <laughs> possible? Well, we wouldn't put on a number on it, but you know that's something that we, we would welcome. Sure. Yeah. Do you have the same feeling about the three tight ends that they could all be co-starters, or is it that someone hasn't really stepped up and taken? Um, that's a little bit different, yeah, just in terms of, of true development of all those guys. But again, it's a place where we're really young and we think we're really talented. Those guys, they just need to be tested. Um, and, you know, going through a, the, the, the kind of the give and take of a game and how things develop when a guy's in, how much run pass, how much they actually see the ball, um, how much difference there is in our opponent's game plan. You know, all those things, guys, you, you kind of develop at different rates. And part of that's something you can control, and part of it you can't. So um, we like all those guys a lot. Uh, they're a little bit, you know, um, less proven than the running backs, I would say, at this point. But it's still still an exciting group of guys. Do you guys have a timetable for when you want to find out? Frost said he thinks this is the deepest group of receivers you've had since he's been here. It's about six years. And that's amazing considering that I think yeah. the combined production is like yeah. 300 plus yards. Yeah. Um, so what is it about this group that has you guys so giddy when they haven't done much in games? They, they just work extremely hard. They've practiced extremely well yesterday, you know, in terms of kind of the energy output and how we track our guys. Nine of the top ten were receivers. So that's all, all told special teams, uh, offense, defense, all, all the stuff that we do. And they're making a ton of plays. Uh, again, now we have to do it when the lights are on. And, and uh, But the way they've trained, that, you know, I expect nothing but good things. And they're, they're going to they're gonna make mistakes. They'll, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll make mistakes just like everybody else. But, but, uh, yeah, very excited about the long-term prospect of that position. You feel like you're sitting on a pretty explosive secret that no one's seen before. Well, that's what you, <laughs> you, you never know. I mean, you know, I think we talked about this a little bit in fall camp of just of we were excited coming into fall camp, but you, it's just unproven, and, and now I think we're more excited, but it's still not game proven. But usually, what happens out there happens out there. What are your anyway. expectations for the defense for week one? Um, well, I hope we run around really hard, play, you know, really hard, tackle well, communicate, and, and you know, line up correctly. And if that, if those things happen, uh, you know, along with all the other fundamentals of, of 
you know, taking on blocks and tackling and pad level. Uh, everything else should take care of itself. But a first game situation, you know, a lot of times guys that haven't played together a lot, they go tunnel vision mode, and that's the worst thing you can do is we just want to over-communicate, uh, line up correctly, and then just, just run. What do the Coyotes bring to the table? Yeah. They're, they're, they're good. They lost a lot of... Uh, I, I was asking someone this morning, is it coyotes or coyotes? Because there's, coyotes. Co there's coyotes. a couple, couple coyotes. people who are They'll very uh, yeah, particular about that, which yes, is good. Um, what are their school colors? Red and white. Yeah. Scarlet and white? Nope. Like coyote red. Anybody know? Like Vermilion? Damn. Nice. Vermilion. Nice. Is, nice. is that a white color? You can't do that. It's like a red and white. Vermilion of colors? That's a town as well. It is. Yeah, it's like Aloha. It's many things. <laughs> um, but uh, what was the question? <laughs> what do they bring to the, what do they bring to the they, table besides Joe Glenn's, name? Joe Glenn's. Yeah, Joe Glenn's a great coach. You know, he's a guy that, that I've, I've known. You know, I don't know him well, but I've known him and of him for a long time. Going back to you know Northern Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, always uh, fundamentally sound. They play their tails off. They're they're very well disciplined. You know, they, they got they got beat pretty good by North Dakota State, which everybody at that level did. But they had a bunch of other really good games. Kansas, they had on the ropes for a long time. Had a, an overtime loss, you know, just a bunch of those games. And, and he's rebuilding that program. Was Epo's part returning that come about where he kind of volunteered himself? Or you guys say, we've seen you over the years. We think you might be a good fit. Combination of both. Yeah, I mean, in, you know, any, any skill guys automatically think, they, they automatically think they're <laughs> the best return guy in America. So he's been back there uh, quite a bit in practice over the last, you know, couple of years. Um, but that's another position where I think we have some really good competition going on, and and we'll see that, you know, that develop in the in the heat of the moment. Surprise at all that a guy like that who's an All-American already has a lot to lose by potential injury would volunteer himself for no, an extra role. Not being around Efo, nothing, nothing of that realm surprises me. He, you know, he's a been a great special teams player his entire career, uh, and is a number. I mean, he volunteers for stuff all the time that that, that wouldn't be the first time. You know anybody's list. Regardless of you know, big deal. Regardless of him wanting to do that, do you guys have to think about that when deciding to put him back there? The extra kind of vulnerability that you sure. put the best cornerback in the country in. We we try to yeah, we'll, and there's a few guys like that. Whether it's him or Keenan, uh, Darren Carrington's another guy. Uh, Devin Allen's another guy that's played a ton of special teams for us this this fall. Um, we have to kind of keep an eye on him. Um, you know, punt returners can control things a little bit. Um, but but yeah, and, and then it's our job to make sure he's not you know he's not going to be starting on six special teams to, to manage that. Fisher on the left and Andre on the right. <coughs> what went into those guys playing there? Um, best combination. You know they've both kind of played in both those spots uh, at various points, and and um, I think that that's where they it appears that they play with the most confidence, and and. You know, we'll, we'll continue to be interchangeable with those guys and work everybody uh, at, at, at multiple spots. Is experience especially valuable at left tackle? You think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's obviously you. If you're going to get beat quickly, you know, with a right-handed quarterback, you prefer to get beat quickly on the right. We hopefully we're not beat quickly or in, you know long term. But um, but yeah, I mean that. But that that didn't have anything to do really with that part of it. On the depth chart stuff, going into Michigan State, do you want to have that many fours still? Is that where you want to have a more solidified kind of where guys fit? Maybe the running back tight end, maybe that stuff goes on, but some of those other ones. Do if you want everybody's to playing well and it's even, that's a great, you know, that's a great or. Because, you know, especially defensively, we're going to be playing a bunch of guys. All those guys that are listed as ors offensively will play. You know, it's not like we're going to, when one guy is even significantly ahead of somebody else, it's not like the other guy's thrown, you know, thrown to the, to the gutter. Uh, and so we'll continue to, to compete. Again, I think I think the neat part about all those spots over the last couple of days, since we had these kind of depth chart discussions, everybody's practiced well and practiced with, with you know confidence and, and a desire to, to get better. Um, and, and I don't know if that's a byproduct of that or just getting closer to the game, whatever, but we'll take it. That's a common thing you said where it's you announce the depth chart, you see the guys who are on the bottom kind of lose focus maybe sometimes. It can happen. In this case, maybe yeah. the other way. Yeah, I thought we had, you know, I thought there were, there were a couple guys certainly that went to the scouts that guys weren't excited to go to the scouts. And if, if they were, we probably questioned their, you know, desire at the front of it. But uh, our practice has been really good so far this week.